In today's video, I'm just going to take a look at how to build a simple RF detector demodulator probe like this one here. The probe is quite simple and uh, you, know, it's, uh, you can use it with a DMM or a scope. It will give you a good relative reading of RF amplitude. And it's useful for, you know, if you're working on radios, maybe tuning the IF stages, aligning the radio, adjusting uh, filter responses, you know, peaking RF uh, stages, you know, and uh, just examining RF amplitude modulation, whether it's, you know, AM or single sideband or whatever it might be. So there are many, many variations of this circuit. Uh, this is the one that I built here. Uh, just uses a pair of one nanofarad capacitors, a couple of germanium uh, diodes, one in 34As, but any uh, very low voltage, you know, even a Schottky diode would work here okay. But the one in the 34As will probably give you about the best response. So the way this works is that uh, it was, it's kind of almost like a little bit of a RF peak-to-peak -peak detector. As uh, say this RF voltage falls, eventually as it falls, it eventually turns on this diode here. So then you essentially build up a voltage across that capacitor in this direction. And when the RF voltage then comes back up, it raises the voltage on this node up to turn this diode on and then basically transferring that charge over onto this capacitor here, charging that capacitor up. So uh, that process continues until essentially this capacitor gets charged up with something that's you know, reasonably close to the peak-to-peak -peak RF amplitude. Of course there's going to be losses with uh, you know, the diode capacitance and the diode voltage, but it basically gives you an output here that is proportional to the RF amplitude. I have included a 10K resistor to, to basically pull the charge off of that capacitor so that this thing will respond to variations or amplitude modulation like we're showing on the screen here. So this is an AM modulated signal and that's the detected output that is uh, shown through the probe. Now because we're using diodes to do the detection here, uh, the response isn't going to be perfectly linear. So that's why I say it kind of gives a relative reading of RF amplitude. Now, of course, you know, knowing that, you can build yourself a little, you know, a curve. You can make some measurements of, you know, RMS voltage input and voltage output. And you can see that once you get up past, uh, you know, about uh, a few hundred millivolts uh, RMS, uh, it's pretty linear. Okay, and then you get down below about, uh, you know, hundred, you know, a couple of hundred millivolts RMS, it will start to soften up. But I found that I've, I've got a response uh, out of this probe. You know, even with as little as about uh, 10 to 10 to 15 millivolts RMS of RF, we can start detecting the, the presence of RF. And sometimes that's all you need if you're just trying to peak a circuit. So uh, I just threw a couple of other numbers here for reference. You know, in terms of you know, 200 millivolts RMS is about 565 millivolts peak to peak, or just about minus one dBm. You know, and you can kind of you know build your scale to you know whatever units make sense to the work that you're doing. So let's take a look at uh, how we put this together. So the construction of this is uh, much like the, the schematic layout. I started off with just a, a simple piece of uh, copper clad board and I just simply put two score lines in it, uh, one right here and one right here uh, to basically create three isolated pads. I right, hold this up closer here see if you can kind of see those score lines right there and right there. So th this pad essentially is ground, and then we've got the isolated pad here, and then the input node. So that corresponds to the input node, this node here, and then this is kind of all done in air. So I've just got a little SMA connector on this end here, soldered to ground on the board. And uh, for the input, for the probe, I just used a little square header pin, and uh, it makes a nice little stiff uh, probe tip. So there's the one nanofarad input capacitor right here, and then uh, these are the two diodes, one in 34A here, and that one is going over to ground. Okay, and then the other one in 34A diode here is that guy going over to the center pin of the connector. Sitting underneath that diode, if you look carefully, there's the 10K resistor uh, going to ground, and then uh, you can see the the other one nanofarad capacitor uh, from the center pin going to ground. And that's it. Uh, I've attached a, uh, a little alligator clip ground lead here to connect up to the circuit. Just solder that in. You can use whatever you know, uh, would work for you for ground. But that's the, uh, the basic construction. 
and uh, and it works pretty well. So let's go uh, take a look at how this works. So the setup here is I've got a signal generator back here generating an RF signal. That is being coupled into the input of this little exposed uh, transmission line. So I didn't have a radio here to open up to do some testing, so this is a nice controlled experiment. So I've got you know a 50 ohm line coming in here. There's just a, a 50 ohm micro strip on this line going back out uh, this line here to the scope input. And uh, so I can see the, uh, the sine wave of the RF on the scope, and the scope is also reading the RMS voltage uh, down here. So uh, we'll notice that if I, I've got it set to about one millivolt, or excuse me, one volt RMS, it's actually about 990 uh, millivolts RMS. And if I simply touch the probe to the transmission line, we can see the response uh, on the scope on the uh, on the meter about 1.8 volts or so. So now the frequency response of this probe is actually pretty good, probably down to about 100 kilohertz or so, up to over 100 megahertz. If I grab the frequency here, um, that's at 10 megahertz right now. Now we start ramping it up. Uh, there's at 30 megahertz, uh, still getting a good response. Uh, let's see, there's at 50 megahertz right here, still getting a, a good response. So certainly usable over the uh, HF and, uh, and VHF uh, frequency ranges uh, with the you know, kind of uh, prototype construction that we have here. Of course, the probe is really useful for looking at uh, the envelope of a modulated RF signal. So let's go take a look at how we'd set that up. I'll switch the uh, signal generator to be an amplitude modulated signal. I'm going to take the output of the probe and connect it up to channel 2 with a scope here. All right, And let's uh, slow the sweep speed down on the scope so I can actually see the uh, modulated RF envelope. And now if I probe this, we can actually see, let me bring channel 2 to the top, you can actually see the probe output basically responding to the amplitude modulation of the, scope, of the uh, RF signal. So uh, really useful for uh, looking at modulation, you know, peaking RF circuits if you're you know, building a transmitter of some sort or just uh, adjusting uh, the response in a receiver or an IF. Uh, a little RF detector probe like this can be really handy uh, for helping to, to tune those circuits. Thanks again for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.